Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Trip Keeper, and on today's video, we'll be doing another frightening trip reports to fall asleep to. And speaking of frightening to fall asleep to, there's a damn thunderstorm coming, and it might be a tornado. I don't know. So, it might be a first on YouTube history tornado while we're recording. Um, no, I don't think it's supposed to come up here, but Columbus might get one. I don't know. It's supposed to be pretty crazy, though. The power might go out, which might suck. Um,. Because, you know, my whole life is connected to the internet, of course. And Ozzy's using the litter box right as I started recording when you had, like, three hours to do it before. All right. Um, you know, just for that, Ozzy, you're going to have to read some stories, okay? Oh, he's taking a dookie. He is taking a dookie. Like, this cat is just does not give a fuck. Man, I wish I had that ability. Eh, sometimes I do. But anyways, not drinking a Miller High Life today. I think I'd just give it a rest for a video, you know, just... it. I take, I, I drink the, them to just like, you know, get loose for this, but I don't feel the need to get loose today. I'm already pretty tired and uh, I just don't want to feel that way when I go to bed tonight. So we're just going to not worry about it. Um, but I always have liquids next to me no matter what. Even if I pee, I'm going to drink that. Um, actually, Ozzy didn't poop. That was pretty quick. I can't tell you. Sometimes, you know, he's in the position. He's he's sitting there like he's going to take a crap, but he just peed, uh, which I prefer. Because when he poops, oh, my God. You smell it right right when it comes out. The, the other day, I was taking a shower, and he must have won the litter box while I was in there. I walked out, got this whoo, wave of poop smell. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. It was not, not fun, but... Uh, that's why, you know, please do it when I'm at work. So that by the time I get home, the smell will go away. Or even like 30 minutes, you know, when I'm not doing nothing. Just, you know, fucking do it then. And he's got the zoomies now. Um, but anyways. Let's do this shit. I got uh, a couple stories here. Some of them actually, um, there's some long ones on here, longer. Um... I picked five, and if we need more, depends. I'm trying to go to like 40 minutes at least again. Um, we'll see though if I feel how I feel after these five stories. Um, but yeah, I might have to get this out pretty quickly though because if there's a thunderstorm and the power goes out, this is not going to be able to go up today. So um, and who never who who knows what's going to happen out there? I just heard thunder. I don't know if it's coming, but I heard it. Maybe it was like a trash can or something. I don't know. Not a can, but like a dumpster. But there's no dumpsters nearby. Um, it was probably thunder. It was expecting thunder. You fucking dumbass. Alright. I was gonna save this one for Halloween, but that's like way too long, and this is from now, and this is not long enough to be, you know, featured on the main channel, so, but hey, it's gonna be interesting. My friend got psychosis and almost killed us on Halloween on Mushrooms. Uh, posted by Wobbly TV. Shout out Wobbly TV. Uh, excuse me. Me and my two best friends BNN decided we wanted a trip on Halloween together. It was also B's birthday, so we wanted to get fucked up and have a good time. We went to N's house. He lived with his family. It was already dark outside, so we decided it was the best time to start. We all crushed up four grams each of shrooms into a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and laid back and waited for it to hit. <coughs> Oh shit, I see lightning. Yep, it's coming. We watched the horror psychological movie Get Out while coming up. Me and B had a good time watching it, but N was quiet the whole time. He said he was seeing closed eye visuals for the first time. Oh, do you guys hear that? Oh, it's coming. Oh shit. After the movie, me and B decided to go outside and go on a walk down N's neighborhood. Everything was different there. It's like I could walk for miles and still not get anywhere. Everything was so stretched out and colorful. We both experienced the same feeling of being in a whole different world. N joined us a bit later and seemed fine. We were having a great time, until we weren't. I've taken shrooms plenty of times and 4 grams is a light dose to me, but my friends weren't as experienced as I was, so I felt responsible watching them. They started to act funny. B kept mumbling and repeating words over and over again. He couldn't stick to a whole conversation without changing it up right away. N was fine, but he was kind of quiet, which is unusual for him considering he was, very, he was a very funny, outgoing person. I wanted them to calm down, so I made the decision to go back in the house and put another movie on so he can all chill out and come down. This is when N started acting very strange. 
Me and B were having a conversation next to N's house when we noticed him staring at us, staring at us at the door. His face was blank. His eyes were empty. I didn't think anything of it at the time. We then successfully got back into his room. N started to act really loud and stumble around. This worried me because I did not want to get him in trouble. His mom and family is extremely strict and religious. Looking back, I realized this was probably the worst place to trip balls. I kept telling him to please be quiet. He kept asking why and that if he didn't care if he got in trouble. He also began to cuss at me and say, fuck you, over and over again. He then started to speak in broken English, then to speak only Spanish. This really scared us as N normally speaks English, especially to us. God, I hate when shrooms turns me Spanish. This happens every single time. No, I'm just kidding. Then he would keep putting his hands on me and pretend to hit me. I pleaded to B to help me contain him, but he was also tripping and just froze. I realized he wasn't going to be any help, but I didn't blame him considering he wasn't in the right mind at the time. It was at this point I figured I was going to leave before it got worse. I didn't know what else to do at this point, so I grabbed my bag and left the house. There comes the rain. Wow, you're going to get free thunderstorm sounds without even having to add in the effects? Shit, where are you going to get this content anywhere else? I immediately called my girlfriend to tell her what was going on. N followed me out in a stupor. His eyes had no life in him. In them, it's like he had completely, completely lost his mind. I understood what was going on at this point and knew it wasn't going to end well. B went to his car and locked himself in. I tried to tell him to help me deal with N again, but he didn't budge. I told him to wait till I could back out because my car was behind his. I got in my car and started to reverse. I couldn't see the backup camera because I was tripping so hard. N then walks up to my moving car and opens my passenger door and actually gets into the car. He asks where we are going and I tell him to leave. I'm freaking out at this point because I'm too fucked up to back out of his shitty driveway. I keep backing up into a tree in his yard. I look down and I notice my Glock is next to my cup holders. I realize that in his state, he would grab it and try to kill me for sure and I wasn't going nowhere in my state. I decided to put my car in park and leave the car at the house. I told him let's go on a walk to draw him out of the car. He agrees. I then lock my car and run down the driveway. N was still coming after me aggressively and threatening me over and over again. I thought to myself what the easiest way out of this was for the both of us and I think to just knock him out. I've been boxing for a while now and I feel like it wouldn't be hard to do, but I still feel responsible for my best friend and I don't want to put him through any more trauma, so I decide not to. Probably a good idea. Instead, I convince him to play a game with me. He agrees and I tell him to go back towards the direction of his house and I go the opposite direction. He, agree he agrees again and starts to walk away. I take this opportunity and run as fast as, as, fast as I can away from him. I call my girlfriend again and tell her to pick me up. I'm still tripping and I don't know where I am and I'm afraid I'll tweak out like he did. I, I sent my girlfriend my location through iMessage. I then notice my phone is at 4% and I have to bunker down in a set locations, location so she can find me if my phone dies. I jump into a ditch in a field next to the road and sit down so N can't see me if he goes out and looks for me. I'm shaking at this point of fear of the uncertainty of the situation. I'm filled with anxiety at this point. I have audio hallucinations the whole time I'm waiting of I I have audio hallucinations the whole time I'm waiting of sirens of sirens of those EMTs and police. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, but, but. I fear that my friend will go back and murder his family, or worse. My car is still at his house, and the empty bag of shrooms is still in my bag in my car. I keep thinking I'm going to get locked up and never see my girlfriend and future child. It turns out N went back to the house and banged on B's car over and over again, shouting at him. Eventually, B is able to speed off and get away. My girlfriend eventually gets to me after sitting in this ditch for 40 minutes. We then retrieved my car and got away as well. Luckily, after we had left N, a luckily after we had left, N had went back into his room and went to sleep, and his family never heard a thing. We all got away safely and vowed to never do that ever again. I still took mushrooms a few months after this incident, and they continue to help me, but I will never trip with a friend ever again. You never know what they may be going through. Psychosis can happen to anybody, so everyone, please be careful and be aware of what you put in your body. N went through pure horror during those hours and still hates talking about it to this day. Please be careful, even if the dose seems small. 
All right, that was a really good story, honestly. Um, I I would love to hear N side of the story. Uh, I feel like that would be crazy. I wonder what he was thinking. Like he probably thought you were a damn demon or some shit. Um, but if he would have found the gun, yeah, that would have been pretty bad. Um, but I'm glad you didn't decide to punch him. That was not a good thought to have. But um, hey, we all have weird thoughts like that when we're tripping, right? Nothing makes sense, but it makes sense at the time. Uh, just like that joke the mushroom told me that I can't remember. I wish I could remember it, dude. It was the... I was dying laughing at it when he told me. I was like, oh my god. I just... It was hilarious. It was seriously hilarious. I got... Maybe I gotta take mushrooms again to hear it, but... Man, that mushroom was... He's a comedian. He's a real comedian. Anyways, that's one. And now it's starting to, like, rain down pretty hard. Let's upvote that so we don't forget it. Um, so that's seven upvotes on the story. That's pretty good. Um, all right, this one. Oh, this one's pretty long. Yeah. I think I'm reading this because this is, um, yeah, this is a weed story. And I'm not, I'm probably not going to do any weed stories anytime soon. Maybe, oh, you know, April 20th, maybe. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really don't care. Like, we... Weed stories, there's there's so many of them. It's gonna be hard to get to get through all of them. You know, I just get countless, endless ones. So I'm just trying to get them all in these videos so I can read them all. Um, but yeah, and plus you can't you can't go wrong on the internet. I mean, there's I, I bet you on Arrowhead there's like a hundred billion weed stories on there. <laughs> Reddit, don't even ask. But there's still some of the most interesting ones, honestly. So it's not that's not bad. Um, but let's upvote this. Ooh, make it seven upvotes again. Uh, this one's, I thought I couldn't get high, then I poisoned myself by Bumble Lexi. Or Bum Lexi? Bumble Lexi? I don't know. Yeah, this is going to take a while. And we're at how many minutes? 12, 19. All right. I am quite resistant to some substances. I think due to the fact I might be autistic. I always need more morphine at the hospital, more numbing agent at the dentist, etc. Apparently some people on the spectrum experience this with medications and other things, like me with weed. I'd smoked weed a good handful of times before, but I never felt any of the effects everyone raves about. Not from smoking a blunt, not from bong rips, not from wax. Not even from high quality stuff medical dispensaries sell. I feel absolutely nothing, which really frustrates me. I struggle with chronic pain and several members of my family encouraged me to continue to try weed in different forms to hopefully somehow feel some relief. My sister told me that edibles are really nice for her. She feels happy, a bit sleepy, but most importantly, she mentioned her pain is all but gone. Wow, what a, what a nice family. If I told my mom I was smoking weed, she'd be like, you should be drinking beer instead. Love you, mom. Figuring this would be better than smoking again, I contacted a friend to get me some edibles, two 75 milligram hash oil gummies to be specific. I asked this friend how much I should take, being that I've smoked with this guy before and he's witnessed my inability to get high. He told me to take one whole gummy and added that he usually takes two if he wants to go to sleep. I knew nothing about weed or its dosages, so I trusted his word as, as, as a religious pothead. Yeah, I don't know if you could take these people's words because, man, religious pothead that's totally different from what i am i planned out an entire sunday to try it my boyfriend babysat me and he made sure i had plenty of water in me and on standby and had me eat a nice full meal that morning i ate the gummy right at noon to monitor how long it took to feel anything i was doing some house chores when i started to feel the first effects about 40 minutes later bending up from loading my dis Dishwasher. Dishwasher. I felt that I was moving in slow motion, so I plopped myself on the couch, drank another glass of water, and prepared to get giggly. I wish that's what happened to me. Five minutes passed. I started to get really dizzy and couldn't focus on my vision or vision on anything. This triggered my anxiety quite a bit, and I decided it wasn't worth the high. I panicked and ran to the bathroom to make myself vomit. I saw the remnants of the bright pink gummy fall into a bowl fall into the bowl and a wave of re relief washed over me as I thought I just avoided a disaster. Boy was I wrong. I love when people add this into the story and they say boy was I wrong or I made a huge mistake. <laughs> it's so funny. I start laughing at myself when I, reading, when I read it. Um, 
Upon standing up, I felt like my vision took entire minutes to snap to where my head was turned, and just moving my body felt like I was treading water. My boyfriend came to check on me, and all I could say was, I think I need to sit down. I crashed onto the bed in our spare room. I couldn't even make it to my own bed. The second my body went down, I felt a sharp electric jolt where every part of me made contact with any surface. Moving my limbs felt the same, repeated sharp zaps and a residual painful buzzing in my hands and feet, and especially in my neck. Yeah, honestly, I think I've had that feeling before. The it's, It wasn't painful buzzing, but it felt like pins and needles a little bit after I smoked. I moaned and writhed in pain for a while before everything got 10 times worse as I felt like my senses were becoming extremely mag magnified. <laughs> magnified. I realized my body was surrendering, surrendering to an anxiety attack mixed with what I assume was THC poisoning. I knew this wasn't the nice feeling high everyone told me about. Either that or the shit was laced with something else. Definitely a high dose. This is when I really started to panic, and I felt my heart rate rise extremely fast, accompanied by hyperventilation. My mind was all there, but I felt like I couldn't control any part of my body except one of my hands, which I kept firmly pressed to the side of my neck to monitor my pulse. It stayed at, con stayed at a consistent 180, which I knew was a really bad sign. Yeah, it's pretty high. It was then that my hands and feet started to shake to a point where I couldn't control them no matter how much I wanted to. I tried to keep moving anyway. I attempted ripping my glasses off my face, lifting a water bottle to my mouth, but I couldn't even find my own head, let alone grip anything I tried to hold on to. My vision continued to get worse until I no longer recognized the room I was in. The books around me looked, they were, looked like they were written in a foreign language. The tree outside of my window looked like it was put under a painterly-like filter effect. The carpet below warped endlessly, and I felt like the floor would drop out from under me. Not a good time, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much right now. Then there was the sensitivity to light and sound. I could barely stand to listen to music, which usually calms me down. That and my vision flashed and strobed rapidly every time I looked outside where it was light out. I began rocking back and forth to comfort myself, and I frantically looked around to keep my eyes from rolling into the back of my head, which is what they tried to do any time I locked them on anything for more than a few seconds. Focusing my vision felt like fighting off anesthesia before surgery. My boyfriend remained behind me holding me and rocking with me as I had one hand still on my neck and the other in my lap. He took deep breaths to try and get me to mirror him, but I couldn't slow my breathing or heart rate down at all. I could barely even look at his face to ground myself. Every perspective was so shifted, it felt like being on every carnival ride at once. Everything moved forward and backward, horizontally and vertically, around and around, all at the same time. So basically you were on the Gravitron. That ride is fucking insane, dude. The one where it like spins at 100 miles an hour in a circle and oh my god. I am so lucky I was never in one where someone vomited, I can only imagine. Everywhere I looked, my depth perception was fucked. My hand below me looked miles away. The cars outside our apartment looked inches from my head. At some point, both of my cats jumped onto the bed and started rubbing up on me, which made me panic even more. I thought to myself, your cats know you're going to die. They're saying goodbye to you. They love you. Oh, man, that's, yeah. Honestly, when I was having bad, uh, like, bad times smoking weed or, you know, maybe a trip, like, Ozzy really helped me out. Like, he was purring on my chest, like, I started calming down. But you do get that little feeling, like, you know, are you going to be anxious when you can go up to him or something? But, yeah. I tried to pet them, but my hands shook so badly I was afraid of accidentally hurting them, so then I started crying. Of course, the wave of emotions made everything worse. My tinnitus, my tinnitus kicked in at max volume. Oh boy, tinnitus too? Alright, where am I at? Alright. Then I began to have auditory hallucinations, that of disembodied voices maliciously chanting gibberish over and over my head. I felt like I understood them at the time, and I was really scared at what they were saying to me. They got so loud at times I could barely hear my boyfriend's reassurances, re reassur reassur <laughs> reassurances of, it's going to be okay, you're safe here with me. 
He saw that I was completely gone then. He fed me water anytime I could hold still for more than a second, and in the meantime, he tried to keep me present and speaking. The problem was I felt fully aware and cognizant. I wanted to tell him everything I was going through, but I completely lost the ability to speak at all. I can only make mumbling, moaning breaths no matter how hard I try to form a coherent sentence. At that moment, and without any warning signs, a torrent of puke came up came up from me in three giant waves. This included any ounce of water I had consumed, and of course, all the food in my stomach. I had no indications of nausea beforehand, but now I sat in a pile of my own vomit all over my clothes, my hair, the bed, and the floor. My boyfriend rushed into action, propping me up so I didn't choke, wiping my face clean, making me blow my nose, and cleaning up what he could. He gave me a bucket as I continued to heave and cough for 10 more minutes. In that time, I guess he managed to get my bile-soaked shirt off of me, but not my pants as he couldn't move my legs an inch without me yelping in pain. I retched until my stomach could no longer move. He thought about calling for an ambulance, but I knew all they would do is put me on a drip and send me home after the effects wore off. I decided I wasn't going to rack up a medical bill for that, so when he proposed a hospital visit, I just mumbled no over and over. He got me charcoal tablets and tried to get them in my system, but I continued to vomit anything he fed me. At this point, I was crying hysterically and slurredly asked what was happening to me. Or what happened to me. I didn't even know I vomited. I just felt like someone ripped all of my organs out of my body and funneled acid into my sinuses. Everything hurt so bad. This wasn't comparable to any of my disability related flare ups I've ever had. I'm used to pain, but this was pure torture manifested in every cell. I felt like my body was turning against me. Nevertheless, my boyfriend remained calm and told me that I had thrown up and that he would like to get me into the bathtub. He tried hoisting me up, but I could barely move, let alone stand without crying in pain. I slumped back down, and that's when I began to nod off. For some reason, my brain told me if I fall asleep, I would die, so I fought like hell to remain awake. Every time my head fell down as I drifted out of consciousness, I would snap it back up, and the accompanying zaps of electricity assaulted my neck. The visuals, the visuals continued to worsen, as did the auditory hallucinations and the body pain. It came in worsening waves as I tried my hardest to fight through the experience. I felt like I was higher than the stratosphere, blackout drunk, near death, and completely fucked. I'm still struggling to find the exact words to describe the pure terror I felt. I couldn't even dissociate from it. It was incarnate, in, incarnate in my surroundings, my thoughts, and my being. All I could do was cry and fight my body to stay awake. I was somehow sitting slumped over on the floor clutching the, clutching the trash can when my mother called. My boyfriend had been messaging her updates the entire time and she was keeping him calm. I don't even remember what, what she said to me beyond, are you doing okay? They both told me all I said back was a really distant, gonna have to be, as I threw up once more. I felt like this was the height of the experience and it wouldn't get worse from there. I muttered out plateau, and I think they both heard me and, and understood what I meant. Still drifting away, I started apologizing to my loved ones in my head, convinced I was dead soon on an account of my rapid and hard heartbeat. My emotions were so dark and foreboding, I knew my anxiety was spiked. Oh shit. Oh, that was Ozzy. What the hell? But I guess my depression was too. I was ready to accept death wholeheartedly. All I wanted was for this to be over. Just as I finished my rounds of guilt ridding, I crashed back and slowly faded farther and farther away until I fully blacked out. I don't remember having dreams, but I know it was the deepest sleep of my life. Not even knocked out at the hospital made me fall this hard into unconsciousness. It was like I got a trial run of being dead. I felt an overwhelming neutral darkness and an overall feeling of acceptance. Not positive or negative in any way, not peaceful or malevolent, just pure acceptance and nothing else. It felt like years that I was gone. You experienced death, I think. That was death. When I woke up, it was early evening. Only a few hours had passed. My head felt like it had been under- My head felt like it had- my head felt like it had been under a hydraulic press, my whole body through a wood chipper. My poor boyfriend rushed to my side and had me drink water immediately and helped me to stand. 
The worst was over and the initial high had passed. I could finally move again, albeit only little bits at a time. My vision was still a little off and I felt hopelessly confused. Worst of all, I smelled like a landfill, so he guided me to the shower and helped me wash myself. The pain was almost intolerable, my skin was extremely sensitive, and my joints felt like they took the pounding of a lifetime. The shower alone took probably an hour, the water felt like a million needles giving me a full body tattoo. All I could do was cry and spew sorry after sorry as my boyfriend had me lean on him while he helped me wash my hair. I eventually got clean and felt mostly better afterwards. I took the next day off of work, lying in bed nursing a headache all day and eating the only light food he would allow me to eat after all the vomiting I did, though I was painfully hungry. I had intense brain fog for a couple of days after that and lost my train of thought often, but, but that got better after a little while. Needless to say, I will not be trying weed again in any capacity, no matter if that really was just a weed gummy or if it was laced with something else. But even then, I'm not sure if I want to know. Edit. Removed a couple of repetitions of words to make it sound better. You're welcome, Trip Keeper. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, no, that was actually a pretty insane story. That was, uh, yeah. Pfft. Sounds like you just had a took way too much um that gummy yeah you never listen to a pothead ever again that pothead probably thinks if he's taking two to fall asleep like dude come on and you vomited up i don't know how much vomiting up like takes away uh you know i i really i couldn't tell you um clearly it didn't work for that um but luckily i've never had to do that before i, I don't even think i could just stick a fucking finger in my throat and do that it just, I don't know, be hard for me to do. But shout out to your boyfriend too. I mean, God, he was, uh, that's one of the best trip sitters ever. Um, just always being by your side. It's, it's nice you have an accepting family who just like will take care of you instead of judging you for doing it, you know? Because people, you know, weed is still looked at as like a fucking heroin you know it's still it's like people don't accept it as what it is it's i mean it's a miracle plant uh good for recreational usage not for me i hate it but that doesn't mean it's bad you know i i like to make memes about shitting on it but that's just for my entertainment purposes only um but i still think it should be used you know but i just don't like it that's all um but i i think it's it's helpful for lots of people and i think if you want to do it go do it all right we upvoted that didn't we yes we did um an egregious amount of nicotine addiction oh an ag amount an egregious account of nicotine addiction i see what you're trying to do here you're trying to name the title of the video well let me tell you that's a good title let's upvote it we got four upvotes now this is by hypnotic stench oh boy i've been around people who have hypnotic stenches let me tell you your nose would want to fall off all right we're at 28 minutes so far so that's we're actually on a good pace i think the five stories i chose are going to be perfect i would like to preface this by saying i do not intend to demonize or fearmonger vaping with this story it is simply my personal account oh burp time oh god Oh, also, if you guys want to read, if you guys want to have a chance to be on my main channel or this channel, submit your story to this Reddit, Trip Reports TFTT. Got the best chance to do it that way. Do not send me trip reports through an Instagram DM or email. It will just be ignored because I, I'm, you know, I just like to have everything organized here. It's nothing against anyone who wants to send me. I'm glad you want to send me a story. Like, don't take it the wrong way. I'm not trying to like be rude or anything. I just, I, I love it when it's in Reddit. It's a perfect place for it. It's just how I am. I'm OCD about that shit, and it's just how I, how I want to have these stories separated. You know, it's not nothing against. You know, you send me something like i i will take it but it's just not going to be read on the channel like i i might read it myself but it's not it has to go in here and it has to be hopefully formatted correctly but if you at least get it on here that's a good start but yeah don't take it the wrong way if i if you send me something through instagram or email and i don't respond or anything just don't do not take it the wrong way i appreciate you i appreciate i just want to say that out there i just want to give a psa that's just how i feel um 
All right, I said that already the first sentence, so let's uh, skip ahead. I guess I'll start from the beginning. Freshman year of high school. That's already a terrible start. You didn't have smoking in high school. Uh, freshman year. Uh, yeah, no. Vaping is... Vaping was a, is a terrible invention. I had already been smoking weed for a while, and like many of the students around me, I started experimenting with the vapes that my friends had. Within the few rips of my life, I was hooked. Being a young addict, I had poor self-control and was susceptible to aggressive addiction. Fast forward three years and many disposable vapes later, and I'm in my senior year of high school. Vaping ravaged my appetite, and I now weighed 20 pounds less than I did at the beginning. I was also prescribed Adderall halfway through my junior year, which didn't help my diet at all. For anyone that doesn't know, Adderall really suppresses your diet. Uh, it is just... It, you, you are not hungry on it. You better eat before you take it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm sure everyone has experienced an ear or full blackout from either standing up too fast, holding your breath, or other similar means. When looking back on memories, I've never disliked the symptoms of passing out. I would never have the urge to seek these effects, but I, always, I was always left with a curious sensation after they would occur. Honestly, I can't remember when or how I started, but I developed a habit of taking a large hit off my vape, inhaling as much air as I can, and holding the hit in. After three to five seconds of holding my lungs full of the nicotine and forced air, surrounding noises fade into a deafening silence and reality starts to buzz around me. I feel a warmth start to grow in my chest. My consciousness collects behind my sternum, my vision pulsates, saturating reality in a beautiful contrast of colors. Then, the ball of my chest begins to rise, complemented by a vignette that closes in as my consciousness nears the base of my skull. As blackness envelops my reality, I lose motor function and begin to fall. Once my vision completely closes in, the darkness erupts into a, in, into a flash of significant but irrecoverable visions and thoughts. While my mind's eye is being berated by images and non nonsensical ideas that seem to make the most profound sense, my body is shaking. Upon losing consciousness, my, my body begins to slightly but rapidly convulse. I have no sense of my limbs, but strangely, I can still feel them shaking. My head inflates and increases its weight tenfold, initiating a constant battle at my neck and revoking my ability to stand. I began to prepare for this by doing it in an area where I could safely lay down. As my brain slows down, reality begins to build itself in front of me again. For a brief moment, the time of day, my location, and even my identity are besides me. Uh, regaining an understanding of my surroundings, it's hard to tell whether I was out for three seconds or five hours, even though there is always a little logical voice telling me I couldn't have been out long. I couldn't have been out long. Out of curiosity, I perform the same ritual of holding my breath with more air than my lungs can handle without the vape, and I didn't pass out. This told me that the effects were happening because of the nicotine. This both excited and terrified me. I knew that because these symptoms were produced by nicotine. I would likely develop an, an affinity for them. This became especially scary when I couldn't help myself but to perform the ritual during school. In math class, my teacher is lecturing and writing on the board. I sneak my hand under my shirt and inhale a massive hit through the collar. I pull my head up from the vape, force as much air as I possibly can in my lungs, and I feel the familiar sensations begin to take effect. My vision fades completely black, mind racing, and I wake up on the floor with my entire school desk and chair tipped over with the whole class rushing to my aid. The thought of what damage this could be doing to my neurology was terrifying. 20 second dramatic pause. We won't do 20 seconds, but let's just wait 20 seconds in our minds. I believe that nicotine's effect on my diet plays a large role in these circumstances. I have an admittedly low calorie diet, hitting very few nutritional requirements per day. This most likely plays into the ease of losing consciousness and the significance of the effects. I also feel my Adderall use may be a contributing factor due to the drug's vasoconstrictive nature. However, nicotine was still the one constant in causing me to detach from reality. Not a good combo, not a good combo at all. Uh, my advice to you would just be stop doing that. Um, yeah, I don't know, stopping nicotine won't solve problems, but uh, I mean, it will solve problems, but you know, losing consciousness, that sounds like a terrible thing to be addicted to. Um, I don't know what to tell you about that, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
I would just be careful that you don't know. I mean, your brain is still developing. My brain is still developing. I'm 20 fucking four still. It's still got a couple more months and we're ready to go to 25. But shit, our brains are always developing if you think about it. All right. This next one is called My Brush With Death, DXM, and THC. Let's upvote it. Uh, this is by Anonymous Fucktard. I've been abusing a combination of dextromethorphan and cannabis edibles nightly for the past couple of months. My addiction to drugs kicked off when I was 12 years old. Uh, excuse me for the burps, guys. Oh, God, I'm, that pizza is still hitting me, bruh. At some point or another throughout my life, I've been gripped into heavy addiction to all classes of drugs, cannabinoids, alcohol, gabaergics, stimulants, opiates, psychedelics, and even anabolic androgenic ster steroids. Dissociatives were new for me. It was it gabaergics? I, I haven't had to read that word in a while for a story. Gabaergics? Gabaergics? I think I was on it, but I'm not going to check now. For most of my life, I've been drunk or high. I've been homeless several times. I've, I've had countless overdoses and three stays in the ICU. One of those stays had doctors calling my parents telling them I probably wouldn't make it. I've, I've even prostituted myself on several occasions. I knew I was killing myself and absolutely ravaging my organs, but I cared about getting fucked up more than wanting to get or stay sober. I hated myself. I didn't care whether I died or not. I knew what was coming and that it would come sooner rather than later. No drug or combination of drugs has hooked me like DXM and THC. While I was under the influence of this combo, I could hardly think. It was amazing, totally clips from my life. Oh, escape. I'm reading Eclipse because I'm excited for it next week. It's totally passing right over my fucking my fucking city. Oh my god, dude, it's gonna be amazing. With all other with all other substances, I eventually lost this feeling of being able to escape. My problems and misery would still surface while being fucked up. I knew I was killing myself faster than I ever had. The last week or so of abusing this combination, I started having seizures and would stop breathing at night repeatedly for about a minute or so each time. I would go to tack a car I I would go tachycardic and my blood pressure would shoot through the roof. I began taking propranolol, shout out propranolol, and clonidine with my DXM and THC to try to combat the damage, uh, the damage being done to my heart to no avail. I knew the end was near. I wanted to stop or at least moderate my usage, but like all great addicts, I simply couldn't. This all culminated Wednesday, February 29th, when I dosed 270 milligrams of freebase DXM throughout the day and 300 milligrams that night. That night, about an hour, I, about an hour after I dosed my 175 milligram edible, I began feeling incredibly sick. I couldn't control my breathing whatsoever, and my heart started pounding worse than it ever had any other night. I knew I would die if I didn't get help. My wife was sitting next to me in bed asking me if I had taken anything other than edibles. I lied and said no. Eventually I told her to call 911 before I slipped into unconsciousness. All right. Now the only reason I believe the events that followed to not be a dissociative hallucination was because I was able to recall specific occurrences that night while being comatose. I sat up in bed. No, not really, but I believe my soul left my body. I stared straight ahead, not being able to move. I knew I was either dead or brain dead. I had finally pushed it too far. I had fucked up for the last time. Abject terror filled my head. This was it. I was not coming back from this overdose. Two EMTs and eventually firefighters, eventually three firefighters entered our bedroom. This was later confirmed by my wife. They did everything they could to try to rouse me, to no avail. Sternal rubs, smelling salts, nothing woke me up. My pupils were fixed and dilated. I was, I was a three on the Glasgow coma scale. Glasgow, Glasgow, as, as bad as it gets. At this point, I had stopped breathing almost entirely. Then, something strange happened as I was sitting up in bed watching the shit go down. My terror turned into acceptance. As soon as I felt this feeling of acceptance, I fell down a tunnel of light. On the other side, I relived my life's events and all my past life's events. I never believed in reincarnation, heaven, hell, near-death experiences, none of that. It was all bullshit to me. 
I had some under I had some understanding that others have had these near-death experiences, but never cared to read any accounts of them. People either made them up or their brain was just preparing them for their inevitable deaths. It felt like I was reliving these events for a billion years. My memory of the specifics surrounding these experiences is pretty hazy, but the last part of this near-death experience was extremely vivid. My next vision was me in a hospital bed. A few people stood at the foot of it. My, my hospital room was beautiful. Colors were bright and everything had a white glow to it. In this part of my vision, I felt unconditional love, more peaceful than I have ever felt on earth, and utterly euphoric. There really are no human words to describe the intensely amazing feelings I had here. Directly in front of me was a doctor, dressed in a white coat with gray hair and a beard. I understood that this figure was God and that I was in heaven, without this being said to me. I started to cry and ask God why and what I did to deserve being in heaven. I have lived my whole life in absolute degeneracy, treating absolutely everyone back on earth as objects and only saw people in terms of what they could do for me. God told me I was here because I am a good person. This made me cry even more because I knew that even if even if he had said I am, a, I am a good person, historically I hadn't been one. God didn't say it, but I knew I wouldn't be given a choice to stay with him in heaven. I had to go back, although if I'm being honest, I would have stayed if given the chance. Right before I regained consciousness in my, in my actual hospital bed, he said three simple words, carry the message. It was 3 a.m. when I woke up from my comatose state, feeling surprisingly okay physically. Mentally and emotionally, I was a bit confused and disoriented. I took the oxygen out of my nose and walked out of my room, having to ask the nurse what had happened and where I was. Shortly after that, I was given my discharge papers. The papers stated the diagnosis was altered state of consciousness. I'm not sure why, but I asked no further questions and left my room walking to the ER lobby. All I had on me were my clothes and phone. I hailed a lift ride back to my house. The whole situation felt very bizarre. The whole day I was confused and a bit angry. Carry the message. What the hell does that even mean? What was I supposed to do? Tell sinners to repent and turn to God? That made no sense to me. All I wanted that day was to go back to heaven and stay there for eternity. I even briefly considered taking my remaining 300 DXM pills to fast track my way back there, although I quickly realized that I probably wouldn't be going back to that place had I done this, and what kind of person would I be to abandon my wife and three beautiful children? For some reason, I didn't put two and two together until I looked up the phrase, carry the message, on Google that night. I have been in and out of Alcoholics Anonymous since the ripe age of 15, never fully getting through the steps. Duh, carry the message is the basis of the 12th step of the numerous 12 step programs. After realizing this, I felt better. I know I'm the same person I was before this near death experience, but I also know that I can change, but, I, but only if I work for it. It's only been a few days since I had my brush with death, but I've gone back to AA, gotten a sponsor and restarted my step work. Addiction sucks, but those in recovery have so much to offer to other struggling addicts. I've always, view, I've always viewed the negative of events in my life as meaningless torture and self-sabotage, but now I realize I can use these experiences to relate and help others in their sobriety. I've had a couple of previous spiritual experiences, the first of which brought me out of atheism, but I took my self-will back after both of them and never followed them up with continuous action. I feel like God has been trying to beat me in the head to get me sober many, many times, but what can I say? I'm an, extreme, I'm an extremely stubborn guy. This experience was profound and I need to remember that. This is why I'm writing this down because I know my addict brain will try to either forget this, rationalize it, or conflate the facts. Another great story. Uh, yeah, DXM, usually if you don't do a lot of it, that not a very bad combination, but um, in this case, yeah, just took way too much. Um, but all right, we got one more story here, and that's actually perfect. Uh, this is Izzy the Hippie. We're going to upvote it. 350 milligrams DPH plus 20 milligram muscle relaxer trip report. Love these muscle relaxer trip reports. I'm a fairly small girl. tee <laughs> 5'1", and, and around this time, I couldn't have weighed more than 105 pounds. Oh, God. 
not a good not a good size to take Benadryl. I mean, you shouldn't take it at all, but I went to one of my best friend's houses at, and around 3 to 4 p.m. we both ingested 350 milligrams of DPH, 14 25 milligram Benadryl pills, and two 10 milligram cyclo, cyclobenzaprine. I hadn't eaten anything that day, and after downing the pills, we smoked a bowl of indica. Before even finishing the bowl, I started to feel the come up. I felt heavy, slow, and tingly. Speaking became increasingly difficult as my tongue numbed and my brain slowed. 45 minutes in, we turned off the lights, got in bed, and put on a movie. I can't even remember what we watched because shortly after, I started to notice the spiders were emerging. There's those spiders. They rose from the ground, whipping and contorting, limbs flailing every which way. My attention, however, was quickly pulled to my hands. All we had to do, all we had to, all we had to light up a room were red, red LED lights and the and the televisions glow. In the dim, hazy light, I glanced down, only to realize my hands were vanishing into black smoke. The smoke snaked around my palms, engulfing them and quickly dissipating as it climbed the thick air around us. Before long, my hands had vanished completely. DPH pulls your, dulls your emotions, so I thought nothing of it as I sat staring at the nubs of my wrists, hands completely evaporated. I don't even remember having any feelings about the situation whatsoever. I just remember think, thinking, huh, guess I have no hands now. I was hardly phased when glancing up and seeing before me a bleeding man hung up on the wall like a gruesome tapestry. His lower half had been completely severed, leaving nothing but tattered bloody rags hanging from his tear-soaked bl blouse. His head looked miserably to the ground, hate-filled eyes searing fiery red holes in the plush tan carpet below him. His face was shrunken and withered, as if he'd been starved for weeks. His crimson-stained shirt hung loosely around his bony frame. Ribs protruded through his sickly gray skin, eyes and cheeks sunken, lips white and cracked like desert ground, starved of water. His arms were splayed out, a gleaming silver nail drug, dug, a, a gleaming silver nail dug deep into each wrist, blood pissing from the grisly wounds. It looked like he slipped a little, causing the nail to tear through the supple tissue of his battered wrists. He hung crucified before me, and though he didn't utter a word, it was as if he spoke to me telepathically. He told me one of the great and he told me one of the great injustices he'd suffered, condemned to death of the most heinous degree. I felt his angu anguish, his fury, but couldn't muster up the strength to move or help him. I couldn't even turn to tell my friend what I had seen, to explain that I had just witnessed a suffering man hung on our wall like a sadistic art piece. I don't recall much after that except fleeting voices chattering all at once. It was like a party were happening in the next room all over, n next room over. Muffled voices talking and laughing, glasses clinking and faint music, all emanating from the walls. I watched a few shadow people come and go. They'd walk into the room and sit observing us for a minute or two before leaving, their glowing scarlet eyes piercing into our souls. They could somehow access our memories, either that or they were some odd om omniscient beings able to read our very souls. They held all our memories, our feelings both good and bad. I remember just knowing they fed off our lives, feasting on every thought, feeling, past experience, and future ones we not even lived yet. At some point, I'd even imagine another friend of ours coming over. We talked and laughed for hours only for me to nod back into reality and realize they'd never been there. Eventually, I dozed off and awoke, and awoke around 8 p.m. to my friend asking me if I fancied a smoke. This was not the craziest trip I've had on Benadryl, but it's by far one of the most vivid and strange ones. Whether or not that's due to the weed, I can't say, but it was definitely an experience. <coughs> that's a classic uh, DPH report right there. Can't go wrong with fucking shadow people, hallucinations, man, a, a metaphoric Jesus. Like, that story had it all. Honestly, I skim through these stories when I picked them. Like, I just, I, you know, I, I, I tend to look for words that stand out to me, and I know it's going to be good. So, I think I chose some five good ones here. I mean, these are some classics. This is a video you can come back to and listen to again. Plus, this video is going to be a uh, close to 50 minutes or over 50 minutes 
let's do it over 50 minutes. Um, yeah, I guess it's not going to storm tonight. It, it, it chose not to, I guess. Uh, so what the hell? I mean, I'd rather it not be a tornado or a thunderstorm and have the chance to have the fucking wind knock down a tree or something. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep doing this. This is volume two of Frightening Trip Reports to Fall Asleep 2. Um, that rhymed with the same word, but different spellings. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll try to get to as many stories as I can. This is, uh, this is going to help out a lot. Um, but there are, recently I've been getting lots of stories. When I first started this out, I was getting like a story every like once a week, but now I'm getting like one or two a day, at least three a day, maybe. Um, and then there's days where I don't get any, but then yeah, it's just like balances out at the end though. So, um, yeah, that was uh, Frightening Trip Reports to Fall Asleep to Volume 2. Uh, come back next time when we do Volume 3. And if you are asleep, I'm in your dream right now. <gasps> oh my god, that Big Mac is $9 in this dream. Oh my god, do not buy that shit. You have other payments you have to pay for. You cannot afford that Big Mac. What are you doing, dude? Stop buying it. Oh my god, the ice cream machine is broken too? Fuck this McDonald's. This is a terrible ass McDonald's. Even though it's not real right now, even though you know you're dreaming, this is a terrible McDonald's. Go to fucking Burger King. Uh, remember, I think Burger King had an ice cream machine before, didn't they? Yeah, you want to go there right now. Don't go to Wendy's, though. Do not do not go to Wendy's. Go to Burger King, get an original chicken sandwich and a double cheeseburger with those good pickles on it. You can't go wrong with that. Plus, it's only going to cost you a couple dollars. Not $9 for a Big Mac. I can't believe you actually contemplated doing that. You actually pulled out your wallet and grabbed your card. You were going to pay $9 for that fucking Big Mac, and you weren't even going to get the meal. You fucking dumbass. What are you doing? Let's go to Burger King.